Hey, Headliner Nation, we got to keep it down on this episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Hit that like button because I've got a sleeper for you, but we want to keep everyone in the dark until you can stash them on draft day. Headliner Nation, what's going on? Kyle, coming to you from the once dark draft.com studios. We've got the light on now for another episode of the Fantasy Headliners, and we're going to shine some light on this sleeper that I have for you today. We're going to keep everyone else in the dark. Only Headliner Nation gets a chance to shine some light on this wide receiver sleeper that come draft day, we probably need to be talking a little bit more about. So before we get rolling on this video, a couple of things. Number one, as always, hit that like button, comment below, and as always, more importantly, hit the subscribe button below if you are not already a part of Headliner Nation. Myself and everyone else in Headliner Nation, we want you to join. Come on in, sit down, talk some fantasy football with us, hit that subscribe button. If you do and you're new to Headliner Nation, let me know in the comments below so I can personally welcome you. Also, don't forget the draft guide. The Fantasy Headliners draft guide is now live. $19.99 is going to get you almost 500 pages of in-depth research. Everything from strength of schedule to my dynamic running back rating, the perfect draft, player profiles, lots and lots of time went into this draft guide. And for such a small price, it is one of, if not the best, best purchase that you will make for fantasy sports this year. So make sure that you head over to our website, thefantasyheadliners.com, and purchase yours for $19.99. But without further further ado, we need to get into this sleeper episode, and I've got a guy for you. I'm not going to give you his name right away. I want to wait a minute here because I want to throw some stats out for you before I give you the name. So just uh, to kind of bring you in a little bit. Okay, cast that hook, and let's see if we can reel you in a little bit to this episode. So I'm going to talk about a guy, and some of these stats here are going to be for wide receivers who played at least 75% of their snaps, or 75% of their team snaps in 2018. So this individual, out of, again, wide receivers that played at least 75% of snaps, 13.51 average depth of target, which was 7th most in the National Football League, 13.92 yards per reception. That was ninth in the National Football League. 4.85 yards after the catch per reception, which brought him in at eighth in the National Football League. And he had two touchdowns of 40 or more yards, which is tied for six in the National Football League. So the name of the individual might end up surprising you, but not maybe necessarily about the name, but who he played for as well. Some of those stats and then taking into account who he played for, you got to wonder how he pulled that off. But right now his ADP is sitting at a very nice and manageable 142.8. He is the wide receiver 54 in drafts right now. Again, this is a guy that is basically going to be going close to undrafted, if not undrafted in some leagues. And this guy... I think needs to be looked at as the wide receiver two on his team. And we're already hearing reports about it. And that's why I wanted to do an episode on him right now before the chatter starts up too much. I want to make sure headliner nation is finding out about him, but it's Dante Moncrief from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's definitely going to be one of my sleepers this year. And he's the guy that I am going to be targeting late in drafts to add to my team for some potential Yeah, risk-reward weeks, he might have a really low floor, but I think he's going to have a decent ceiling as well. And that's why I'm not going to grab him and and expect him to be a a big impact player, but he's a guy that I can play on bye weeks, I can play for injuries, I can also play in really good matchups against poor cornerbacks or poor passing defensive teams. So let's let's go through a little bit more of this. So obviously he's with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was with the Jacksonville Jaguars last year. A mess at quarterback, really just a mess overall on offense. And he was still able to put together a decent season. Um, here's another interesting stat for you, though. So since 2014, Moncrief has the ninth highest touchdown to reception percentage of 10.5%. That's actually a tick higher than Antonio Brown. Now, not saying he is Antonio Brown in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying that the guy, even though he hasn't put up great seasons, he's been injured uh, when he was in Indianapolis. He was injured quite often. He finally played in 16 games last year. But the guy scores touchdowns. 
uh, over 10% of the time when he catches the ball, he's going to score a touchdown. And I think that I think that bodes well for his time in Pittsburgh this year. Really, the other other person that's going to be battling for that wide receiver two spot is going to be James Washington. And I don't mind James Washington. I wasn't in love with him like a lot of other people were coming out of the draft. I think he's a good wide receiver. I think he's a, a good. We'll say good. I think he's a good wide receiver. I think Moncrief is a good wide receiver as well. But to knock on James Washington a little bit, he had a catch percentage of 42.1% last year. And there were a couple of games here and there where you he got an opportunity and just couldn't haul in a pass. So is he going to take that huge step forward? Right now, out of training camp, the feedback from everyone, including Ben Roethlisberger, is Moncrief is settling in as that wide receiver number two. They've got a good chemistry so far, and he's really, really winning that wide receiver two battle right now. Last season for the Pittsburgh Steelers, five players with at least 30 tar- targets saw more than 12 yards per reception. So they not only did they spread the ball around a lot, obviously when you have as many passing attempts as they did last year, you're going to spread the ball around a lot, but they had guys who were making big plays that were making big plays. Moncrief is going to fit into that. Um, in 2015, 2015 was his, was his best season, and that was the last time that he was really healthy and next to a legitimate wide receiver one, and he's going to be next to Juju Smith-Schuster this year. In 2015, he had 104 targets, 64 receptions, 733 receiving yards, and six touchdowns. So looking through it a little bit, I didn't want to get overhyped. Obviously, Antonio Brown leaving is freeing up 160-some-odd targets, to be spread around. Is Juju Smith-Schuster going to get more targets than he saw last year? No, probably not. I mean, he saw a plenty of targets last year. More than likely, he will end up seeing about the same. Because the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, for as much as they threw the ball last year, I, I expect that to regress a little bit. I still am looking at potentially over 600 passing attempts, but not nearly what we saw last year. So when I was looking at projections and trying to figure out what what what's a comfortable projection for Moncrief? I don't want to get too excited again. I don't want to say he's going to get all 160 of those targets. Those are going to be spread around. But I think 100 targets. I think 100 targets is a good uh, is a is a good number, a good round number in terms of what we may see from him. That leaves a, a potential of another 100 and or another 60 some odd targets to spread around to Vance McDonald. If you want to, James Washington will probably see a little bit of an increase. Ryan Switzer, a guy that I like, you might see him get a little bit more involved this year as well. And maybe a guy like Jalen Samuels as well sees a little bit more targets. So I think 100 targets is a good round number. And then when you're looking at his uh, catch percentage over the course of his career, he's just below 60% over his career. But again, he's been injured a lot as well. He's been dealing with some injuries and things like that. So that could lead to some down seasons. So I, I, I projected 60 receptions. So that just above that career reception percentage, I'm um, projecting 60 receptions. One of the reasons for that is he might not see nearly as many cont- contested catches this year. He might not see nearly uh, as many uh, he, I mean, the, he's going to see some more one-on-one battles. He's not going to be double teamed by anyone. Um, he might see some decent plays downfield, especially when you got a guy like Vance McDonald and Juju Smith-Suster who can work in the middle of the field. You got a James Conner and a Jalen Samuels who, in the short passing game out of the backfield, can work too. So I think Moncrief is going to to burn some defenses this year. I think he's going to get himself open this year. So I like him to have a, a catch percentage that's a little bit higher than his career average. And projecting yards as well, I'm projecting him for 762 yards and seven touchdowns in this offense. So that would firmly place him as the wide receiver two. And I know in Pittsburgh, we've been used to seeing a wide receiver two like Juju or like Antonio Brown was at one point that are putting up huge numbers. I don't see that with Moncrief. I don't see huge numbers, but that's why he's a sleeper because we're not expecting a huge season out of him. So when you put all of that together and you kind of, and in a PPR league, you take those points and and you figure out what that is. You're looking at 178.2 PPR fantasy points for the season. That's going to place him in terms of fantasy points from last year at the wide receiver 33 mark. So that's going to put him just inside wide receiver three status. And again, that's why we're looking at him as a sleeper. We're not looking at him as a wide receiver one or two. We're looking at him as a wide receiver that can produce some wide receiver three weeks, but has 
upside that has that potential for some big plays, some big touchdowns because of that offense that he plays in. And I already gave you those numbers, that average depth of target, the yards per reception, the yards after the catch, two touchdowns of 40, uh, 40 plus yards last year. The guy can burn it a little bit still. He's going to be the guy that is going to help stretch the field in Pittsburgh this season. I do believe he ends up beating out James Washington. Again, I don't love James Washington. I think he can be a good wide receiver. But unless Moncrief goes down with an injury, he's already looking like he's the candidate candidate to fill that wide receiver two role. And I think he can do that just fine. And also, you never know as well. You could see Washington and Moncrief on the inside, and Juju into the slot more often. So they've got some things that they can do with this offense. So I think there are more than enough opportunities for Moncrief to be on the field, close to that 75% snap percentage that we saw from him last year while he was in Jacksonville, somewhere close to that again. The production of a wide receiver three with some big upside weeks, and a guy that you have on your bench that, again, if you have an injury, you can place him in. If you have a guy that's just not performing well or a bye week, you can put him in. Or maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to get a nice defensive battle that week or a nice defensive uh, cushion that week. You're going to be playing a team that's going to give up a little bit more points. Maybe the cornerbacks aren't as good. Maybe it's going to be a high-scoring affair. Whatever it may end up being, you can slot Moncrief into a flex position or a wide receiver three position, and you know that that upside is there, that potential is there, that chance to score a touchdown is there. And sometimes that touchdown is really all you need in a week to get through that week and bring out a, and bring out a win with your other team supporting him. So again, Dante Moncrief is going to be one of my sleepers this season. He's going behind James Washington in drafts right now. So even the consensus right now is that James Washington is still above him. Um, just because of kind of that hype this offseason. Moncrief hasn't quite picked up yet. But I've been seeing in the news that they've been talking about him. There's reports starting to come out saying that he's winning that wide receiver two role. He looks good. Roethlisberger likes him. They're working well together. The chemistry is forming. And that's why I'm throwing this video out to you right now because I want to make sure you're getting this information in advance so the sooner you draft, the better opportunity that you have to get him as a late-round pick and a guy that could help you win some weeks this fantasy football season. So thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Don't forget, before you take off, hit that like button, comment below, share the video, subscribe to Headliner Nation, all of those things. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate all of the support of Headliner Nation. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Go get your draft guide if you haven't done so yet. Please do that. If you buy a draft guide, also let me know. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Again, almost 500 pages worth of content. Thanks so much. Appreciate you checking out this video, and we'll catch you on the next one.